In this lesson, we will predict values with our least squared regression line, and we'll also interpret both parts of the least squared regression line. So we did have this example earlier when we were looking at the protein and fat content of various fast food items. The equation, which we did not find before, is fat hat equals 8.4 plus 0.91 times protein. And sometimes you'll see protein in parentheses and sometimes you won't, and it really doesn't matter either way. So we're going to use our model first to predict. We're going to predict the fat content of a tender crisp sandwich containing 31 grams of protein. Now, I could look over here and find the 31 grams of protein and find, you know, any dots above that, essentially. But I want to find out what does my model predict my actual fat content to be. So fat hat would be 8.4 plus 0.91 times 31 because there's 31 grams of protein. And doing the math, I get 36.6. Well, according to the model, I should have 36.6 grams of fat. The tender crisp actually has 22 grams of fat. So that's likely this little point right here or something to that effect. So the tender crisp has a residual, and we'll talk about residuals more, but a residual of negative 14.6. So again, residuals are the distances between um, the predicted and actual. So predicted and actual here would be the actual fat content minus the predicted fat content of for negative 14.6. We also want to be able to interpret the parts and the, by the parts I mean the y-intercept and the slope. So it's not enough just to say well 8.4 is the y-intercept and 0.91 is the slope we want to actually interpret these using the proper wordage. So the slope, which was my 0.91, and this is kind of helpful to write it this way because we know that slope is the change in y over the change in x, or in our case, the change in fat over the change in protein. 0.91 is like 0.91 over one. So I'm going to interpret it basically in this manner. So for my slope, when I interpret, I always say the model suggests, because we're just going based on the prediction model that we wrote, which is here. This is our model. The model suggests that for each additional one gram of protein, so for each additional x, whatever x is in your question, for each additional gram of protein in a fast food item, the fat content of that item will increase by 0.91 grams. So notice I'm saying for each additional x, there will be an additional however many y's. That is how you interpret the slope. The y-intercept, a little bit easier. My y-intercept is 0.84. So you have to sort of think about what this would mean um, in terms of the question. So it's going to be a little bit different each time. In this case, I'm talking about fast food item. I'm saying the model predicts, and again, the y-intercept, that means it's 0, 0,8.4. So again, I'm going to think of it that way when I interpret. 0x's means that 8.4 is y. So the model predicts that a fast food item that contains no protein, so zero protein, will contain 8.4 grams of fat. So again, that makes sense in this particular question. In the next question, we're going to interpret it just a little bit differently. So for this question, I want to use the distance and airfare data from the example that we just did. Our least squared regression line was fair hat equals 177.21 plus 0 0.079 times distance, and I want to answer these questions. Um, I want you to try all three on your own first, and then I want you to press play and check your work. So for the first, how would I interpret the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 177.21. Now on my last example, I said zero fat content meant, or zero protein meant this much fat content. Now I'm looking at airfare. So I can't say if I travel zero miles, it's gonna cost $177.21. In this case, I might interpret that as saying that the base cost of flying an airplane or operating an airplane out of Atlanta is 177.21. So that's how much it costs just to, you know, basically be there. To fly out of Atlanta, to have that airport, to all of those operating costs, etc. How would I interpret the slope? Again, that's 0.079 over 1. 
and the one, the x, this is distance, and the top is fair, y. So we're saying for each additional one distance, so for each additional mile, we would expect an increase in our price of 0 0.079 dollars. So about, what, um, 7.9 cents per mile is each additional mile traveled. So our base cost here was very high, but for each additional mile, the cost is very low. So for each additional, I could even say one mile traveled, I predict the fare to increase by that value. Last one, traveling from Atlanta to New Orleans cost $199. I got that value from our table. And it covers 419 miles. How much would we expect that fare to be based on our model? So we're saying in actual in actuality, we're spending $199. But based on our model, what would we expect? So essentially, we're going to replace distance with 419 because that is the distance to go to New Orleans from Atlanta and then do the math using our formula and we get 210.31 and of course we would always write a sentence we would expect our flight to New Orleans to cost $210.31 so it's actually a little bit cheaper than what we would expect.